people were. So there are three main reasons of uh, the course to the civil wars. First, in the matters of religion, Charles appeared to disregard the Protestant settlement secured by Henry XVIII in his favor instead of the Catholic mass. And in 1625, he got married with a Catholic member of the branch nobility, Henrietta Maria. And you can see the pictures of her on the rise of the stream, Henrietta Maria. Moreover, uh, Charles also continued to act unilaterally in the matters of foreign policy. In 1629, in the face of racism, he dissolved the parliament, which course the parliament would not meet again for another 11 years. However, in 1640, the king convened a new parliament and the new parliament is completely hostile to Charles. They say that he is weak in his position, so they demand some key concession and personal aspect to Charles, uh, Charles' follower. For example, Thomas Wentworth, uh, as you can see on the screen, is the Earl of Stratford, were to suffer a death penalty for act of treason against the coasted nations. The ông uh, Thomas Wentworth là một bá tước của xứ Stratford. Ông đã bị uh, chịu án tử hình vì bị gán cho hành vi là phản quốc và chống lại đất nước. Okay. So on the scenes, on the scene as you can see on the events, you can see on the screen were set for the civil war, were set scenes for the civil wars occur. So let's see the uh, main periods of the civil war. So on 20, 23rd October 1642, the first battle of the civil wars took place in Agnew in Warwick Sides and resulted in a stalemate between the parli parliamentarian and the royalist force. And for four years afterwards, the scheme mission and the welfare continued to erupt across the nation. And the two rivalries, the two force again to pitch themselves against each other during the war, during the civil wars occurring. So the image that you see in the uh, on the screen depict a failed royalist plot to seize London from the pal parliamentarian in its aftermath in May 1643. So the consequences of this war is very new. So 100, 100, 100,000 soldiers and civilians perished during the wars and 10,000 houses were destroyed. Moreover, approximately 300,000 people lost their life directly and indirectly due to the war. So on the statistics that I have aforementioned have made this war the bloodiest conflict in history. The civil wars, yeah, as well, very, the bloodiest conflict in the history. So now uh, I will have our video clips for you to have an overall view of the civil war. Uh, can I have the video clips? Uh, can you say the sound? Hello, can you say the sound from the, your computer? So it's a easier for us to follow. Catholic and this worried a Protestant mm -hmm. nation, he dismissed can another pop. Can you listen the audio? Can you hear the audio, please? Yes. Okay. And he was quick to anger the English Parliament. Within just a year, he had already dissolved one Parliament and married a Catholic in this.
In 1625, at the outbreak of war with Spain, King Charles became King of Scotland, Ireland and England, and he was quick to anger the English Parliament. Within just a year, he had already dissolved one Parliament and married a Catholic in this worried a Protestant nation. He dismissed another Parliament in 1626 when they tried to impeach the Duke of Buckingham for supporting the French in suppressing the Protestant Huguenots. And he dismissed his third parliament in 1628, after they condemned the king's taxes and any leniency towards Catholicism. Charles then ruled without a parliament for over a decade. That is until, in 1638, Charles demanded that the Anglican Book of Common Prayer was to be used in Scotland, and this caused the outbreak of the Bishop's War. Scottish troops moved across the border and into Northumberland. Now, Charles, needing money, then recalled Parliament in 1640, but it only lasted three weeks because Parliament demanded the withdrawal of ship money, a tax on towns to maintain the English navy. But the Scots then occupied land as far south as Durham, so Charles was forced to recall Parliament again, the Long Parliament. This time the King had to accept their demands, including the Triennial Act, which forbid the King from dissolving Parliament without their consent. Peace was soon made with Scotland, however in 1641 the Irish also rebelled, and this nationalist and religious uprising soon turned to war. Meanwhile, Parliament, led by John Pym, sent a list of their grievances against the King in the Grand Remonstrance. However, the Grand Remonstrance divided Parliament, as many saw it as too Puritan and populist. Charles rejected the grievances and, in early 1642, marched soldiers into the House of Commons hoping to arrest five influential MPs, but they had fled. Charles had now lost control over Parliament and over the City of London, so he fled the capital. The population soon began to divide. The Royalists gained the backing of the Catholics, anti-populists, anti-Puritans and the nobility, mainly from the North and the West. The Parliamentarians gained the support of the middle class, merchants and staunch Protestants in the South and East. In August 1642, after small skirmishes and failed peace talks, the King finally raised his standard in Nottingham, officially starting the war. During the first season of campaigns, the Parliamentarians were able to stop the Royalists from taking London. However, the Royalists made large gains in the West thanks to their Welsh and Cornish allies. In 1643, the King made peace with the Irish and brought his troops to help in England, but at the same time, Parliament signed the Solemn League and Convent with the Scots. They promised to reform the Church of England in line with Scottish Protestantism in exchange for military assistance. The Scots moved into the north of England and lay siege to York. In 1644, the Royalists tried to relieve the city, but their armies were devastated at the Battle of Marston Moor. This battle also helped Parliamentarian Oliver Cromwell rise to prominence and put the North under Parliament's control. Then, in early 1645, the Parliamentarians created the New Model Army, a well-disciplined army led mainly by Puritans. This new army crippled the Royalist forces at the Battle of Naseby and took control of the Southwest after the Battle of Langport. They then lay siege to Charles's headquarters in Oxford. Charles escaped the city in disguise and surrendered to the Scots in 1646, but he was soon handed over to the English and was imprisoned for most of 1647. However, there was infighting amongst the Parliamentarians. The army seized the king and then retook London after Presbyterians protested against the army being in the city. Parliament then engaged in the Putney debates concerning the new constitution. In this chaos, Charles escaped to the Isle of Wight. From there, he made a deal with the Scots, who were worried about the events in England. In 1648, the Scots and Royalists started the Second Civil War, but the New Model Army crushed them in less than a year. The leaders of the army were now unwilling to see Charles return to power, so in December 1648, soldiers blocked MPs lenient to the King from entering the House. The new Rump Parliament moved the King to London and put him on trial for treason. He was quickly found guilty and executed in January 1649, and the Commonwealth of England was formed. But King Charles' son, soon to be Charles II, made an alliance with the Scots and Irish. Cromwell responded to this alliance by invading Ireland, beginning the Third English Civil War. His brutality in Ireland left around a quarter of the Irish population dead. Then, in 1650, now head of the army, Cromwell invaded Scotland and took Edinburgh. But as Cromwell campaigned in the north, Charles II landed in Scotland to lead the uprisings. The king's armies were... Okay, so that's uh, the summary. The summary, sorry, that's a summary about like the civil war. And now, uh, Ian will be continue. Will continue with uh, this, the presentation. Thank you. So, from the middle to the end of the video, it has give, given us some ideas about the next events that I would like to mention. 
death of the king Charles I in 1649. So now I will have some. I will summarize some key periods before the death of the king Charles I in 1649. So following the defeat at the battles of Nasby in 1645, King Charles I will have to seek concessions from the parliament. However, he didn't succeed. And finally, he has sentenced three years of effective house arrest. Có nghĩa là ba năm quản thúc tại gia có hiệu lực. Uh, in 1648, while in the custody at the Carisbrook Castle on the east Isle of White, Charles attempted to sell his throne for one final effort, but he did not succeed to. So during these years, Charles won the politicians to vote for negotiation, and he almost succeeded. However, the military force commanded by Oliver Cromwell demanded we will have a detailed look later. Oliver Cromwell, he overruled the parliament and he denied he refused the negotiation. Moreover, he ran the king a tyrant and a traitor of the country. And in January 1649, Charles was indicted by the parliament on a charge of high treason and accused by waging an unjust war whereby the country has been miserably wasted. The public treasure exhausted three decades and thousands of people murdered. Thì vào tháng 1 năm 1649 thì Charles đã bị nghị viện truy tố với tội danh là phản quốc và chính xác hơn là ông bị buộc tội là đã tiến hành một cuộc chiến tranh phi nghĩa và theo đó thì đất nước đã bị lãng phí một cách thảm hại, kho tàng công cộng bị cạn kiệt, thương mại mục nát và hàng ngàn người bị sát hại. So on 20th January 1649, Charles stood the final trial at the Westminster Hall and after listening to 30 witnesses for the prosecution, on the 26th January, Charles I was condemned to death and his execution warrant signed by 59 commissioners at this time. So he is officially beheaded on the, the 30th January 1649, and on this morning, he was led through the park to the banqueting house in Whitehorn, where a scaffold has been prepared for his execution. So after he prayed, with one swift flow, Charles' head was removed by the executioner X, an unprecedented art of resistance unknown in the British history. And here you can see the prayer, the one last prayer that Charles has uh, defied, declared before he, he is executed. He prayed that I shall go from a corruptible to an incorruptible wrong where no disturbance can be. So it's a, his final prayer before being executed by the executioner X. Đây là một lời cầu nguyện của Charles à, trước khi mà ông bị chặt đầu ở cái đoạn đầu đài đã được chuẩn bị sẵn vào ngày 30 tháng 1 năm 1649. Và cái hành động tự sát này của ông là chưa từng có cho đến nay và chưa từng được biết đến trong lịch sử nước Anh. Đây là một sự kiện rất là chấn động đối với nước Anh và cũng đối, đối với người dân tại uh, trong nước. So here you can see a print of the execution of Charles I. At the day he is executed. So here we will move to the Oliver Cromwell and the Commonwealth. So followed by the death of Charles I, by 1649, the monarchies has been wept away and for the next 11 years, Britain was governed as a republic with Oliver Romwell, style Lord's protectors ahead of the Commonwealth.
Ở đây Gia Lạc, cái phần này mình cũng chỉ nói sơ qua về cái tình hình của đất nước trong thời kỳ Commonwealth được lãnh đạo bởi Oliver Cromwell. Thì do Oliver Cromwell này là một người theo đạo tin lành cho nên là khi mà ông uh, lên thống trị thì ông đã thực hiện rất là nhiều cái biện pháp để đàn áp cái công giáo và cũng như là không cho tổ chức lễ hội, các nhà hát, rạp phim đều phải đóng cửa ở dưới uh, dưới thời của ông và ông cũng là người mà đã ban hành một số cái quy định để cấm cái ngày lễ Giáng sinh được tổ chức ở nước này trong thời gian này. Thì tuy nhiên là Oliver Cromwell cũng là một vị vua khá là tàn bạo. Năm 1649 thì ông đã vây hãm một thị trấn ở Rosheder và dẫn đến một vụ thảm sát 3.500 người, kể cả những người của hoàng gia và kể cả những dân thường liên quan. Và năm 1653 thì ông cũng đã giải tán quốc hội và nắm quyền theo ý của mình. Trong 8 năm kế tiếp thì đất nước được điều hành dưới chế độ độc tài quân sự của ông và được chia thành 11 khu vực do các thiếu tướng kiểm soát. Vì những lý do này cho nên là lịch sử cũng ghi nhớ là Oliver Cromwell là một người tàn bạo và đã đẩy đất nước vào những cái năm chiến tranh và những cuộc đàn áp đối với người công giáo, giải tán quốc hội và thực hiện những cái chính sách đối ngoại rất là rất là độc tôn và không có nghe ý kiến của tất cả các um, nghị sĩ xung quanh. And, uh, sau đó thì vào ngày 3 tháng 9 năm 1658 thì Oliver Cromwell đã qua đời vì bệnh viêm phổi và được kế vị bởi con trai của ông là Richard. Tuy nhiên thì Richard này là một vị vua yếu kém và không có quyết đoán cho nên là chỉ 7 năm sau khi mà 7 tháng sau khi cầm quyền thì Richard đã bị các tướng lĩnh phế trúc và các lực lượng lúc đó trung thành với cái chế độ cũ của Charles, trung thành với cái chế độ quân chủ thì do tướng Munch chỉ huy thì đã bắt đầu tiến quân về phía Nam để giành lại cái chế độ quân chủ cũ. Thì ngay lúc đó là Charles II, Charles đệ nhị với tư cách là con trai của cái vị vua đã bị xử tử là Charles I thì ông được công nhận là vị vua hợp pháp ngay lúc đó và những năm nội chiến ở ở nước Anh cũng đã qua sau khi mà Charles II được công nhận là người kế vị hợp pháp thì ông đã lên lãnh đạo đất nước. So we move to the Charles II and the Restoration. So after years of exile in Brent, on 25 May 1660, Charles II landed at Dover and four days later he entered London to a reputorous public reception and he was later to be Ron King at Westminster Abbey in April the following year. And on the, on the right, you can see a portrait of King Charles II uh, in the cor coronation and the restoration of the Stuart Monarchy. Đây là bức ảnh trong cái ngày lễ kỷ niệm đăng quang của vua Charles II về cái sự phục hồi của chế độ quân chủ Stuart ở nước Anh. After the acceptance of the throne, Charles II has some positive movement. Uh, first, he declared he issues the declaration of radar, which formally recognize the religious toleration, protected rights and land ownership, and subordinated control of the army to the sovereign. And he is also the person who eagers to achieve a new settlement between the monarchies and the parliament. And for his effort, a mutual, and though there are some worries inside, however, the two, the monarchies and the parliament respect each other and emerge a, a two institutions. Moreover, the control, the country lie under Charles II has witnessed some, some good movement. So he, some sleeping restriction imposed on the public lives during the Commonwealth were also lifted. For example, the theaters reopened, the religious festivals were reinstated and the natural realm of lives were resumed. 
Thì dưới thời của Charles II thì ông đã có những cái bước đi rất là tiến bộ. Thứ nhất là ông đã công nhận cái quyền tôn giáo và cũng như là đã ban hành một cái tuyên bố Breda là công nhận cái sự khoan dung tôn giáo và bảo vệ quyền sở hữu đất đai, quyền kiểm soát dưới quyền của quân đội và đối với chủ quyền. Và ông cũng là người đã uh, cố gắng tạo nên cái sự dàn xếp mới giữa chế độ quân chủ và nghị viện. Và cuối cùng thì ông cũng đã đạt được một cái thành công là một cái sự tôn trọng lẫn nhau nhất định mà trước thời đó thì không hề có uh, giữa hai giữa nghị viện và chế độ quân chủ thì xuất hiện một cái sự tôn trọng lẫn nhau mặc dù là vẫn còn rất là nhiều cảnh giác nhưng mà đã xuất hiện một cái uh, một cái đồng ý chung một cái settlements and new settlements và những cái hạn chế về mặt uh, văn hóa đã được tạo ra từ thời Oliver Cromwell thì đến thời của Charles ông cũng đã dỡ bỏ rất là những cái ngột ngạt với cái đời sống trong cái thời kỳ này và ông cho các rạp hát được mở cửa trở lại, các lễ hội tôn giáo cũng được khôi phục và cái nhịp sống tự nhiên của đất nước cũng được khôi phục. Và trong đó thì ông cũng tạo ra rất là nhiều cái sự phát triển tự do cho nghệ thuật và chính trị, tạo điều kiện cho cả hai để có thể phát triển mạnh mẽ và song hành với nhau. Thì đây có thể nói là một cái kỷ nguyên rất là tuyệt vời của các vở kịch thơ ca và hài kịch bởi vì có rất là nhiều tác phẩm được viết với cái góc cạnh hỗn tạp dưới thời kỳ này và với một số cái nhà văn nổi tiếng như là John Dryden, Andrew Marvel, John Milton, Anne Brapel, để tất cả những người này đều là những cái nhà văn nổi tiếng dưới thời của Charles II và đã được sự công nhận và ca ngợi rất là nhiều. Uh, here is on the right you can see the portraits of Anne Brapel. So he is the first woman who can earn a living by writing thanks to Charles' uh, de uh, development and movement in the culture. Uh, ngoài ra thì Charles cũng là một người được tín nhiệm hơn uh, được tín nhiệm bởi các thần dân và các đại thần của ông bởi vì ông là một người có thể hiện cái lòng thương cảm đối với hai cái dịch bệnh, đối với hai cái sự kiện uh, đã diễn ra trong thời kỳ này. Thứ nhất là một cái dịch bệnh đã diễn ra vào năm 1665 thì đây là một cái dịch bệnh uh, do chuột gây ra và nó đã tàn phá nước rất là nhiều người giàu thì bỏ chạy còn người nghèo thì họ sẽ ở lại và sát khi mà bị bệnh dịch thì sẽ đào một cái hố và quăng xuống hố cho nên là đây là một cái dịch bệnh đã tàn phá thiên nhiên tàn phá kinh tế rất là nhiều trong giai đoạn này và một sự kiện nữa chính là the Great Fire of London which will mention by my partners later. So, however, the kings were also known for his many love affairs. He have uh, many uh, loves and most famously with the actress Niu Yu. Uh, she is the famous actress during this period. And he's also have a uh, Rakes and extravagant lifestyle, a luxurious lifestyle. It, um, besides the good one, he has some bad characteristics too. And on the 2 February 1695, after suffering a sudden fit, Charles died unexpectedly at the age of 54. So thank you for your listening. So. Uh, Now I would like to invite you to continue our presentation. The Great Plague of London, 1660. Um, okay, and before we move on the next slide, we would like to share with teacher and uh, uh, everyone about like a video, a short video uh, to illustrate about the Great Plague of London in uh, 1665 and 1666 to see that Uh, how it happened so that we can understand more about this uh, we can say that the disease at London those years okay um okay. So, the press uh, the great place it means that bệnh dịch hạt đó các bạn ha và cái cái này nó có nghĩa là cái giai đoạn này nó xảy ra một cái dịch cái có nghĩa là cái đợt đó cái bệnh dịch hạt đó nó 
nó lan rộng đến khắp mọi nơi và nó giết chết rất là nhiều người ha cực kỳ đau thương ok now you can uh, continue with the video yes yeah, so could you hear my uh, the audio of my sorry yes very clearly okay. yes thank you In the spring of 1665, an epidemic of the bubonic plague emerged in London, England. The plague began in the parish of St. Giles in the Fields, a poor area outside of London's walls. And as spring turned to a hot summer, it became an epidemic. The second plague pandemic is speculated to have started in China and spread through Europe through trade. The bubonic plague is caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, which is transmitted by fleas that live on rats. Victims would have symptoms including fever, coughing up blood, and painful buboes, blisters, and bruises on the body. Victims typically died within days of catching the illness. The poorest areas were the most unsanitary, with rubbish and waste littering the streets, and were therefore the hardest hit by the plague. Doctors were also too expensive for most people, although their treatment was limited in its effectiveness because they thought miasmas, or bad air, was the cause of the plague. The rich, meanwhile, as they could afford to, fled the city. King Charles II, the nobility, parliament and most merchants, lawyers and doctors fled, while the poor remained. The Lord Mayor and Aldermen also remained, to keep order and stop the disease spreading further. In June, the mayor closed the gates of London to people without a certificate of health, as the roads were bottlenecked from people trying to escape the city. By autumn, 7,000 people were dying from the plague every week in the city. Watchmen were employed to enforce a quarantine. If a person was infected or had died of the plague, their old family would be locked away with them in their house, sealed from the outside and kept guard over. A red cross was then painted on the door to distinguish it. Soon enough, the old family would be infected and would suffer the same way. A common sight was also drivers of dead cars with piles of bodies who moved around the streets calling BRING OUT YOUR DEAD and the dead would be buried in mass graves. As winter came, the spread of disease was slowed down. From December 1665, people started to return to London and by February 1666, the death toll had decreased to a level that was safe for the king to return. It is estimated that up to 100,000 people died in London from the Great Plague. After the Great Plague, the Great Fire of London would again engulf the city in disaster, but it may also have helped kill off some of the rats and fleas carrying the plague. Subscribe for more history. Okay, so that is all about the Great Black uh, of London. So, and then moving next to the Great Fire of London, that which happened in 1666. Yeah, thank you, Thao. So, um, 1666 in England were the first year to, to be designated as the Anubis Mirabilis. Um, uh, in a simple, um, in a simple de definition, uh, uh, the the Anubis Mirab Mirabilis, um, as you can see here, uh, which is a Latin phrase that means marvelous year, um, because which uh, it celebrates England's failure to be bitten either by the, the fire or by the Dutch. And this year also saw the Great Fire of London. Um, so um, the people of London who had managed to survive the Great Black in 1665 must have thought that the, the year 1666 could only be better, but couldn't possibly be worse. The fire started on September 2nd in the King's Bakery in Puddin Land near London Bridge. This fire was quite common occurrence in those days and were soon quelled. However, that summer has been very hot and there had been no rain for weeks. So consequently, the wooden houses and building were tinder, tinder dry. The fire soon took hold 300 houses, quickly collapsed, and a strong east wind spread the flames further, jumping on the houses 
the house to house. The panic began to spread through the city, so that King Charles II immediately ordered all the all the houses in the path of the fire should be pulled down to create the fire break. By the 4th September of half, London was in flame. So after that day, the king himself joined the firefighters, passing buckets of water to them in attempt to kill the flame, but the fire red John. All the civics building has been destroyed as well, 13,000 private drawing, but amazingly, only six people has died. Um, only six people has died, so that the monuments has um, the monuments was erected in putting land on the spot was fire began and can be seen today. Is where is it a reminder of those terrible terrible day in September sixteen sixty six? And as you can see, this map um, is said to be a reproduction of the original shows that Sir Christopher Grant's plans for the reconstructing the city following the fire of London. And you can see here, this is the River Thames, um, uh, the River Thames that had the image of Thameses, that the river, got, um, the river got after the whom the River Thames is named. And as you can see here, um, this is the mythical phoenix suggests that London would rise from the ash. Okay, next slide, please. And, and then, next slide, please. Moving next to the Battle of the Bone that was fought in July 1690 between the Catholic James II and the Protestant William III, who had William III is the one who had overthrown James as King of England in 1688. And this, this battle took place across the River Bone at Oakbridge and resulted in a victory for William. This, this battle turned the tide in James' attempt to regain the British ground and ultimate ensure that the con continuation of Protestant as ascendancy in Ireland Um, có nghĩa là cái cái trận um, cái trận đấu này diễn ra là khi um, James đệ nhị cùng với um, cùng với cái uh, cùng với phe Công giáo đã uh, quay trở lại để lật đổ William là người đã lật đổ ông để lên ngôi lên ngôi vua của anh vào năm 1988. Tuy nhiên là sau khi cái trận sau khi kết thúc cái trận này á, thì um, James bị đánh bại và cuối cùng là cái và cuối cùng là vẫn đảm bảo được cái sự tiếp tục lên ngôi của cái phe tinh lành ở Ireland. So, um, so that um, about about the battle that um, William had land in Carrickfergus in Ulster on June 14th on um, uh, in June 14th 1690. Um, um, while that James chose to place his line to defense on the river bone, uh, river bone around 30 miles, approximately 48 kilometers from Dublin. And this, uh, this battle itself was fought on July 1st, according to Julian calendar and July 11th, uh, according to Gregorian calendar. Next, please. So, um, The casualty figures of the battle, the battle was re relatively low for the battle for, of 60,000 participants, but only about mm, 2,000 men had died. Although three quarter of them were Jacobites and William's army had far more wooden, wounded. So mm, after this battle, James did not stay in du Dublin after his defeat. The bone has strategically significant for both England and Ireland. It marked the end of James' hope of regaining his throne by military. The Battle of Bone has been a victory for William III, but it was far from decisive because William failure, William's failure to destroy the best Jacobites and or adequately pursue the retreating 
army only made it more difficult to quell the rebellion in, in Ireland, impacting on the con continental balance of power. Um, William's actions helped bring an end to the war of the Grand Alliance in, Alliance in 1697. So that is all uh, that is all about the events. That is all the events that happened in Britain in six, in seventeenth century. So thank you for listening. Okay. So can I ask you that? What does it mean for the uh, for Jacobite? Jacobite. Um, can you move? Can you move backward? Yeah. Yeah. And though three quarters it's, of them were Jacobite. Yes. Yeah, what does it one. mean for Jacobites? Yes. Uh, Jacobites là um, cái bên là cái um, cái bên theo phe của James là mm. cái. That's right. It means that the people uh, who follow James the second. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, this is a very very good presentation right and then it's quite better for the previous one right with like clear illustration for your presentation thank you thanks a lot cái bài này các bạn làm nó rõ ràng nó kỹ hơn cái hôm trước đúng không ha? giải thích cũng cực kỳ rất là rõ ràng chi tiết ha? okay thank you um, and Okay, so um, 18th century has been done, right? So today we are going to move to 19th century. Is this two? Okay. Các bạn chuẩn bị rất là kỹ ha. Kỹ đến từng chi tiết. Okay. Và có nhiều cái câu chuyện cô đọc sách cô không có cô không có thấy hoặc là không có hiểu rõ cái tại vì các bạn biết là like in British history there are lots and a lot of events right nó có rất là nhiều sự kiện ha và thật sự ra để tìm một cái mối dây liên kết giữa các cái sự kiện đó với nhau á nó cực kỳ là khó ha but thanks a lot mm -hmm. now let's continue with 19th century Yeah, I'm Slack. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Thuy and our club includes Bảo Ly and Bảo Thi. Today we will present about British culture in the 19th century. Next slide. Uh, here we have four main points they are about the Victorian era language and culture the British language and culture and the Victorian value and the lit literature so first of all we will talk about the Victorian era Queen Victoria drew over England for a large part of the century from 18 from 1827 until her death in 1901. For this reason, the period is often known as the Victorian era. This was also a time that Britain saw tremendous economic and industrial growth due to the industrial revolution and the invention of the team inside. We could say that this area era is an increasingly popular symbol of Britain's success in the world and Victoria were regarded as the personification of the contemporary model. Let's move, let's move to language and culture. One of the most common thing is to see that the in English language by this point have been modernized. The Industrial Revolution and the rise of the British Empire during the 19th century saw the expansion of the English language. The advance and discovery in science and technology during the Industrial Revolution saw a need for new words 
place and concept to describe this idea and invention. Besides, the English grammar rule has been established. Most like during this century, islands were in part part of the UK itself, and British culture and way of life came to predominate in Ireland. During the century, Britain became the world form foremost economic power. These two, together with long years of political stability, unequal anywhere else in Europe, gave the British a sense of supreme confidence, even a cloak one about their culture and civilization. At the end of the century, it controlled the biggest empire the world has ever seen. At the end of the century, the population has with to English because the 1940s, the potato crop fell two years in a row and there were a terrible pandemic. Millions of patients, those with garlic, blankets, and customs, either died or immigrated. So the next party will present. So here I'm going to talk about value in the Victorian. The rulers of an empire was moral obligation. There were right changes in social structure. The Industrial Revolution, revolution prompted a large segment of the British population to shift from agricultural to manufacturing careers. As job opportunities moved to the cities, people flocked to urban areas like London and Birmingham for work in factories, especially in the textile industry. They no longer depended on country land owners for their living, but rather on the owners in, of industries. The next slide, please. So the new economic opportunities during this time have to enhance life expectancy and quality of life, but they also reinforce class dividers. That had existed in Britain for a century. Previously, England's were controlled by the landed land gentry or wealthy landholders who gained their status through family land ages. During Victorian times, the landed gentry become wealthy business owners who still control politics and the economy. One uh way way like it's like oh yeah um one positive social outcome of the industrial revolution was the development of Q labor which led to the rise of uh, middle class. This honor is the real middle class of trade people and professionals held a real power in the country. A set of values which emphasize hard work, thrift, religious observance, the family and an awareness of one's duty, absolute honesty in public life and extreme respectability in sexual matters. This is a set of value which are now called Victorian. So uh, the next slide, please. So we have two specific about Victorian value. The first one is the sovereignty and the law against people on the basis of religion were abolished. 
And the second one is that the laws were made to protect workers from some of the worst excesses of the industrial mode of production. Last but not least, we have the British literature. The nature of the new industrial society forced many people to live and work in very unpleasant surroundings, making writers and intellectual protests again or simply ignore. Besides that, romantic poets praise the beauties of the countryside and the vital country life. That's all for our representation. Thank you for all. Thank you all for listening. Are there any questions? Hello. No others. Any questions or concerns regarding uh, the nineteenth century? Hello, nineteenth century. So I think that is it the time the, or the period that um, the Britain that Britain started with the overseas possessions, right? And trading post to like established uh, the British Empire later, right? Cái khoảng thời gian này mọi người ha, ở nước Anh bắt đầu là người ta đi chinh phục mặt biển rồi đó ha. Okay. Xong rồi họ uh, giao thương với nhau ha. Và bắt <cười> để nó khởi đầu cho cái gì các bạn? Cái uh, British Empire rất là rộng lớn mà sử ha. Okay. Các bạn xem cái phim Pocahontas chưa? Mọi người xem cái phim Pocahontas chưa? Chưa coi, ở đó nó chiếu không có coi, nó là tiếng Anh, đâu có hiểu được một coi con. <cười> Pocahontas ha. Okay. Thế thì có thể là trong một buổi nào đó ha. À, cô đang chọn một cái bộ phim nào đó để một một buổi nào đó lớp mình sẽ xem phim ha. Thì cô đang cân nhé. À, không biết là nên xem phim thời kỳ của Anh hay của Mỹ. Thì cái, cái phim đầu tiên mà cô nghĩ đến phải là xem phim Pocahontas à, Tại vì uh, nó thể hiện cái Pocahontas Tại vì cái phim nó thể hiện rất là rõ với lịch sử Mỹ Tương quan giữa hai cái lịch sử giữa hai nước với nhau à, Ok, chắc mình um, break Ok, And we are going to take a break in 10 minutes Ok, and then when we come back We can continue with the 20th century and uh, the present, okay. So it's in 936. Mm, let me see. 936. Let's see. Just wait a minute. 